Hello, and welcome to a University of York philosophy podcast on the philosophy of artificial intelligence. My name is Mark Batava. I'm a third year PPE student at the University of York, and I'll be your host. AI is increasingly impacting many areas of society, and it is raising urgent philosophical, social, and political questions. On the one hand, AI holds great promise to improve our lives by harnessing the power of data-driven decision-making at scale. But on the other hand, many forms of AI seem to replicate human-made social problems and inequities rather than enabling us to make decisions in a more fair and neutral way. Several philosophers at York are interested in topics related to AI and other emerging technologies, and the Department of Philosophy has developed a new master's program specifically focused on the philosophy of AI. But how can students interested in these questions get started working in this area? How exactly does philosophy intersect with this technical field, and how can students with philosophy and other humanities and social science backgrounds start contributing to this exciting research area? To answer these questions, I spoke with York philosophy students Nikita Jandu and Izzy Standen, who under the supervision of Dr. Annette Zimmerman just completed their undergraduate dissertations and are now working at internships at Your Robots. We talked about their experience of studying different aspects of the philosophy and ethics of AI at York, about what they consider to be the most important and urgent issues in the field of philosophy and AI, and about their tips and advice for students who would like to explore similar topics in the future. Now let's get into the interview. All right. To those listening, thank you for joining this discussion today. Nikita and Isabel, thank you so much for coming on for an interview. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here and talking about this. Absolutely. So uh, Nikita, what did you sort of study for your undergraduate and how did you become interested in the philosophy of AI and uh, the ethics of AI? Um, so I obviously did a straight honors philosophy degree. And I was really interested in AI beforehand, just from discussions with my dad about it. But um, there was one module in second year in particular that really got me interested in it. And that was Readings in Ethics of Artificial Intelligence, which was run by Zoe Porter. The reason why it was so fascinating was because she picked so many different types of topics. It wasn't just a general AI topic of whether it's like, a threat or a good thing. We talked about um, self-driving cars, autonomous weapons, um, like war robots. We even related robotics to the trolley problem. So you touch so many different topics and it just kind of expanded my knowledge on it. And I thought, okay, there are so many different things. I really want to learn about more. And there was one topic in particular, which was about an algorithm being used in the US criminal justice system, which was called Compass. And that's what I eventually wrote my dissertation on. Yeah, interesting. Izzy, did you have a, a sort of similar approach to, to your interests, uh, kind of similar to, to Nikita there or something different? Yeah, I did. So I did a straight philosophy degree, same as Nikita. Um, and I did the same module as well. Um, so we have a kind of similar start into this area. Um, but yeah, so I did readings in the ethics of AI. Um, And yeah, like Nikita said, it was a really good kind of introduction to this area. We covered so many different topics. Um, And in particular, I mean, I really, really enjoyed the topic on self-driving cars um, because there's so many different layers to it, so many different ways to relate like really important philosophical problems to a fast developing kind of new area. Um, So like Nikki said, like the trolley problem, you can apply that there and it was just really interesting to find a kind of study a different topic that is very, you know, unique to not only this university at the moment, but just in general. Um, I think when you study philosophy, it, you kind of tend to think it's more kind of older philosophers talking about ethics and, you know, general thinking about life. So it's, it's really interesting to do something very new. And in that, uh, in that same line, are you, quite pe- pessimistic, quite optimistic about the sort of future use of AI within our society today? Will we have 15 years from now all these uh, self-driving cars on the road, or are we going to stick with uh, human intuition? Um, I think I'm quite optimistic, actually. Um, I'm, there is a lot of problems that kind of need to be addressed and need to be evaluated. Um, but I think generally, you know, there's there's hope for the future. And I think as long as we continue to you know, evaluate the systems and make sure that we're being ethical in our approach, then yeah, I don't see why we can't 
employ AI more generally? So I actually disagree with Izzy. Um, I do agree in terms of it, if used in the right way, it's a really good tool to help humanity in so many different kinds of ways like medical and like in self-driving cars. However, there are so many problems and I uncovered a lot of problems with one particular algorithm my dissertation, which was just being used in the US criminal justice system and how it was so inaccurate and it only had 63% accuracy and it was being used for sentencing determinations. So when you have algorithms like that, which are being used on such a large scale, it really does put doubts in my head. And that's only one algorithm out of many that I'm sure we're not aware of are mm -hmm. being used in our daily lives. And there can be sort of confusion uh, for people who maybe haven't studied AI and the ethics of AI as much as you. Uh, and just that, that word, artificial intelligence, within our pop culture uh, conjures up images of uh, evil robots taking over the world. But you just mentioned algorithms. What are the problems with uh, sort of algorithm and algorithms, algorithmic injustice, uh, data-driven issues that still fit in with this sort of realm of, uh, of AI that you guys have been studying? I think the problem is you've got bias and there's a very common misconception that bias can be a negative thing on a whole. However, it can be negative for a group of people and positive for another set of people. Mm -hmm. So the algorithm I was studying for my dissertation, it um, was negative for black defendants um, because it uh, generated a higher reoffending score for them, um, but it worked positively for white defendants because it was generating a lower um, rate of reoffending for them. So that had basically life-changing consequences because of the, how these risk scores were being used. The risk scores were being used um, to administer sentencing and also for like detention whilst awaiting trial, these sort of things. But the most, the biggest thing was sentencing. So someone who committed quite a severe crime and just happened to be white would then receive a lower sentence and less mm -hmm. severe sentence compared to someone who may commit a similar type of crime who was black. So it was injustice in both ways because it should be fair across all different types of defendants, but you've got it working in different ways and failing in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. And you've both done sort of research uh, into these kind of specific questions where uh, where at the where AI can sort of go off track, lead to negative outcomes, sort of circular uh, cycles of uh, of uh, of oppression, like in these kind of cases. But you're also now both involved in a, an internship with a, your robots. Uh, so I'd like to sort of turn to that. And uh, Nikita, how have you found the shift from the academic nature of writing a dissertation to the practical requirements of your internship? I think it's very different because when you do a, dis a dissertation in your undergrad, you're picking a topic that you find really fascinating and you're focusing on particular things and particular ideas and theories and applying it very sort of just like, oh, I want to talk about this and I want to talk about that. However, when we're doing something which is far more practical and it's a different type of topic, but it's contributing to an ongoing, ongoing debate that's happening now, which is really exciting. There's so much more material out there. You're using other people's papers to bring in other ideas that you haven't thought about, but also you're evaluating that. So it's a far different way of looking at a research topic compared to like an undergrad where it's just sort of you and your supervisor. Mm -hmm. Now you can use so many other people's ideas and sort of join together and contribute. And I think that's far more exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And and Izzy, you've had a, a bit longer at your internship. Has the, the work and experience that you've sort of engaged in so far changed your approach to topics and uh, the philosophy, topics within the philosophy of AI? Yeah, definitely. I mean, from my dissertation, I realized um, through looking at facial recognition that, you know, the progression of facial recognition is very kind of, it's not a straightforward path. And so in my research project, which is on um, robotic surgery, I'm kind of finding the same thing there that 
you know, nothing's always as straightforward as it first seems. And so um, in robotic sur surgery, generally, these are robots that are being used worldwide. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's fully deployed and people are using them for quite serious surgeries all across the world. And, you know, it seems really, really positive. But when you look more closely, you realize that there are actually quite a few issues. For example, people um, are actually suffering trauma, such as cuts and burns by these robots when they're kind of written up as effective and suitable for use. But actually, you know, once you start looking a bit closer, you realize that it's all, it's not all that great. And I mean, the robots are so expensive as well, which isn't, you mm -hmm. know, just in general, that's a big investment for the hospitals. And also it kind of widens the gap between, you know, poorer countries who can't afford, you know, these new amazing machines. Um, but then, you know, do they, do they want them? <laughs> it really is kind of interesting to look into safety assurance and, you know, the risks of artificial intelligence, which are really, really important to consider because yeah, nothing's always as straightforward as it first seems. <laughs> With this uh, experience at your internship so far, has it gotten you sort of excited or more interested in a, a longer term future and, and career studying these issues? Yeah, definitely. I found that, you know, the more I kind of look into it, the more I find the topic as a whole is so broad and it's so vast. And I think you discover more and more as you keep going. Um, there are so many different subsections of things that you find and you've really just got to find what you're interested in. And that could be something completely different than what you kind of started out with. Um, and, you know, I, I'm such a squeamish person. So I did not think that robotic surgery would be something that I would ever be looking into, but it's something that I'm really, really enjoying. Um, so I think, yeah, you just got to kind of see what's out there and discover and keep your mind open as well to new things. And yeah, just research what you're interested in. Yeah, absolutely. Just to uh, just to bring this back to the the University of York, uh, Nikita, how has the university sort of helped you along your way from a general kind of interest after undergrad uh, from those modules that you mentioned earlier to uh, a graduate degree, a dissertation, an internship, and now looking to a, a future career in sort of this area of the, the the philosophy of AI and the ethics of AI. So obviously prior to coming to university, it really was just an interest. And then mm -hmm. I did the module and it kind of directed my interest a bit more. And I actually contacted Zoe about trying to learn a bit more about it. And she was very helpful. However, she had a slightly different um, research field. And she told us about um, Annette, who is someone who is absolutely amazing in her field and knows so much about philosophy of AI. And when she joined the university, I think she just brought so much knowledge. And when she was assigned to do my dissertation, she really did make me so much more interested and fascinated by all these different types of topics. And I just thought without her direction, I, I really wouldn't be doing the internship. I wouldn't have done really well in my undergrad. Um, so I think it is University of York staff the access to like the facilities that we have and the opportunities that they are providing. So our internship is actually run by University of York, like the computer science department, but it's bringing in so many other departments. So I have two supervisors. I have one from computer science and Annette, who's from the philosophy department. So you're working with so many different kinds of experts in these fields and you're coming together and working on a topic which is very current. So it's just, it's very exciting, it's very new. And I think it's very unique. And Izzy, uh, what other sort of opportunities that we haven't mentioned yet are there available at the University of York? Uh, you said something before we started recording about a um, about a new master's program. Yeah, yeah. So they've got a new master's program that they're starting at the University of York, um, looking into the ethics of AI. Um, and, you know, it's very new. And I think it's really exciting that they're really jumping on this new emerging field because you know as kind of time passes a lot more people are wanting to get involved in this sector and you know companies are realizing that they need to take responsibility for their actions if they're deploying new technology then it needs to be ethically safe and you know suitable for use and deployment and so I think it's really 
impressive actually that the University of York is actually taking this and trying to you know train young people to get in, interested in this sector and also you know broaden their horizons and start researching the ethics of AI because I mean it's such a broad field and I think you know there's something for everyone here. Yeah. So do you see this field sort of growing exponentially with the, the technology that uh, and the, the access to new technology that AI provides? Do you see this field sort of growing and, uh, and expanding along with that technology with the, the need for oversight and, and research into this, into this field? Yeah, definitely. I mean, technology is becoming more and more integrated into our everyday lives. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you take your phone everywhere, you use computers all the time for work, for your home life, for everything. And so I think, you know, AI is kind of sneaking its way in without us even realizing sometimes. And I mean, I found that with my dissertation looking into facial recognition, like it's used for everything from your phones to airport security. And it's just without you even realizing, it's kind of slowly everywhere. And I think it's really interesting to kind of look at the ethics of that and, you know, is everything that companies are doing safe? And just because they're doing it doesn't mean that they should be doing it. And there's, you know, so many different levels to it in policy, in ethics. And so I think it's it's really interesting and it's definitely growing in popularity and in importance. So, yeah, it's definitely something to consider. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and. Just to, just to sort of wrap things up here, Nikita, if if there are students listening to this or potential students, sort of college students that uh, that are looking at uh, what they want to do sort of for their for their future and uh, and are considering maybe or have an interest in the field of AI and the philosophy of AI, what advice would you have uh, for for a student that says, yeah, that's me. I, I have this interest, but I'm not really sure where I want to go with it, what I want to do with it. Um, so I would say definitely follow that interest <laughs> and look at the diverse modules that University of York has, because it really, as Izzy said earlier, it's not just analytical philosophy. It's not just continental philosophy. You're looking at um, philosophy being applied to current topics now and AI is just so vast and when you look at how philosophy can be applied to things that are happening in our daily lives things that we use all the time it really is fascinating and so I would say don't be scared by it being like oh my god AI it's, <laughs> it's really interesting pursue it don't be scared about not having knowledge in computer science or only having a prior knowledge in um, religious studies or an A-level in philosophy. You should definitely follow it because the guidance is there. The help is there. You learn along the way. You think it might be really daunting, but when you actually start unpacking everything, it's not that scary. And it's just, it's a love, a lovely way to learn new information and be current in what's happening in the world. So I would definitely pursue it. So all you need is that initial interest, you'd say? Yeah, I would follow the interest completely. That's what got me here today. And honestly, I'm so glad that I did it because before I was so scared about entering a field which is mm -hmm. new and there's not like so much advertised about it. It's not like going and becoming a lawyer or a doctor or something that's been there for years. You're going into something completely new. Something your you parents no might not understand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but I, I would say it's, it's growing so much and like every company is using some form of AI. We use it so much and we, we're not aware about how much we use it. But when you start researching, you just realize how much it is dictating everything we do in the world. And everything that we do during the day, so it really is fascinating. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's a a lovely place to sort of wrap up and end on. If you do have that interest, follow up on it, pursue it, because uh, we're gonna we're gonna need you. You gotta you gotta be there. And uh, I'd like to say thank you so much to uh, to Izzy and Nikita for joining me for this interview. It's been a, it's been truly a great time. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for listening to this University of York philosophy podcast, and a special thank you to Dr. Annette Zimmerman for organizing the interview. If this discussion has piqued your interest and you want to learn more about the new master's program on the philosophy of AI, or more about studying philosophy at York in general, please go onto the philosophy department website or get in contact with the philosophy department by email.